Greetings friend, in this tutorial I will teach you everything you need to know about Sudoku jellyfish. I'll define what a Sudoku jellyfish is, difference between jellyfish and other Sudoku strategies, how to spot jellyfish, and most importantly how to make eliminations with them. Click below for the puzzle link and with that it's solving time. Our puzzle example comes from Logic Masters India and it contains multiple jellyfish. Before I show you the jellyfish, I want to review some of the other fish strategies. First of all, an X-Wing. If we had an 8 in this cell right here, and if you looked across row 3 and row 7, where could an 8 go? You may notice that 8s can only go in these four spots, because an 8 covers this spot and this spot, and an 8 here covers these two spots and this spot in row three. So these two rows, the eights are restricted to the same two columns. This is called a Sudoku X-wing. And so you can easily figure out that an eight has to be either here and here or there and there to satisfy the conditions of the X-wing and for the puzzle. And what you would be able to do is eliminate every other eight along column two and column four because you know they'd be here and here or here and here. Now, let's remove this eight and remove our colors. And let's move on to a swordfish. Now, a swordfish is a, also known as a three by three. If you had a four, let's say you put a four in this row, in this cell, where could the eights be in rows three, five, and seven? You may notice they can now be in these three spots in row three, these two spots, in row five and in these three spots in row seven so i'll highlight that and because of this eight you know they can't be here and here they can't be here or here because of the other digits this is a swordfish and now the difference a little difference between a swordfish and x-wing an x-wing has to have you know two by two two cells in each of the rows a swordfish is two or three but you what you may notice is that you know if you put an eight right here you'd end up creating an X-wing in these four cells. Put an eight right there, you'd end up creating an X-wing in these cells. And so as you add a digit, it, would, it just collapses down to the next smaller fish strategy. So this three by three swordfish, you do similar eliminations. In column two, in column four, in column six, you can eliminate all the other eights because you know an eight has to be in one of these orange cells in each of those columns. And if you are new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies, where I help you turn a passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. If you like this content, please subscribe. Tap the bell for notifications. As my welcome gift to you, you can download my free Sudoku solving guide just by clicking on the pinned comment. And now I want to show you the first jellyfish. You may notice I already filled out some of these cells in column two. These are going to be our focus cells for this particular tutorial. A, sort of, a jellyfish is a single candidate strategy. So what we want to do is look at all the single candidates in this puzzle. You may notice I also have filled out you know, twos, threes, and fives. You could get to this point very easily by just doing some simple cross-hatching. This is the only seven in the puzzle. And so now I'm going to fill out everywhere else the seven could go and highlight it. And go here, and go here, and go here. Go in these places. A seven is possible there. It's possible here. These cells, these cells, and right there. Okay, I'll highlight all the possible sevens at this point in the puzzle in blue. Now, look in column one. Where can a seven be? It's in rows two, four, six, and nine. I'll highlight those orange. Now, look in column three. You may notice three of the four same rows. And then the same thing here in column five. And then you go back here to column seven, and it's the same four rows as column one. You'll notice in columns one, three, five, and seven, the sevens are restricted to the same four rows, rows two, four, six, and nine. We have found ourselves a Sudoku jellyfish. All right, so the definition here is in four columns such that at most, four cells are occupied the same rows by a candidate. You have a jellyfish. And where 
the restriction, the restricted cells are that this is called our base set. So the columns one, three, five, and seven are base sets. And then our cover sets are where we can make the eliminations. So you notice that we have more than four sevens in these rows. Everything in blue in those rows we can eliminate. It's not a possibility. You're like, well, how do you know that, Timberlake? Well, I'll show you. If you put a seven here in this blue cell, you knock out the ability of seven to be in these orange cells. Okay, and then what would that do? You now have three rows, four columns to put these seven. So if you put a seven here, it doesn't matter which one, you eliminate the possibility to put a seven in all of these places. You also eliminate from putting it right there. So that would force a seven right here, and you eliminate your ability to put the sevens in those two cells. And so now you can put a seven here. Or there, but what you'll notice is now where can you put a seven in column seven? Can't put it here. Can't put it here because of this seven. Can't put it here. Because of that seven. Can't put it here because of the given. And you can't put it here. You run out of places to put sevens. So that's why we know we cannot put a seven in any of the blue cells. And we can safely eliminate a seven from right there. Uh, something else you need to know is that a jellyfish for the most part, is symmetrical. You may notice that you could look at these rows. Rows 1, 3, 5, and 7, and you're like, oh, is that a jellyfish too? And the answer is yes. I'm just focused on the columns for this first example. And the eliminations are exactly the same in a symmetrical jellyfish. So we'll, let's do eliminations here. We know this cannot be a 7 anymore. Either can it be in those cells, can't be here, can't be here, and it can't be here. So I'll eliminate all the blue. I'm not marking these other cells, but yes, you could eliminate sevens and fill those out if you want to. We do get to eliminate a seven from right here and a seven from right here. So that's how the Sudoku jellyfish eliminations work. Now, let's look at our next digit. You might notice there's only one seven in this puzzle. There's only one eight, and there's only one nine. Those are gonna be the cans we're gonna focus on. So let's remove the colors, and let's look at where the eights can be. See if you could mark all the cells for the eights and spot a Sudoku jellyfish. I'll give you a few seconds. All right, congratulations if you did it. Getting really good at this. I'm gonna do this by first making all the marks like we did before and this is the way I do it it helps very much to have an application with coloring when you want to look for jellyfish you can't do it paper and pencil it's just going to take a little bit longer as you look for where the restrictions are all right so that's where all the eights can be this time I'm going to go by the rows to show you that you can also do a jellyfish using rows as our base sets so let's look here in row one Look here in row three, here in row five, and row seven. You'll notice that the eights are restricted to the same four columns. In those rows, they're restricted to columns two, four, six, and nine. We have found ourselves another Sudoku jellyfish. And so now we can make eliminations. This time the base sets are considered our rows, and the cover sets where we're going to make the eliminations are considered our columns. So we can eliminate all these eights from these cells plus all the colors here you'd also be able to eliminate eights if you had those marked in those cells so that we eliminate all of those eights there awesome and now we want to move on to our last digit like i said there's only one nine here so see if you can spot the jellyfish in nines while i give you a few seconds all right, congratulations. If you are figuring this out, you are really getting the hang of jellyfish. And we're going to make some coloring here. We're going to see where they could be. Well, they can't be here because we already have a nine right there. And I, you know, I, I tend to go back and just check where I made the color markings so I don't over or under mark, which could be a problem. 
All right, get rid of that nine, and we will look here. And I'll do the columns again just to kind of go back and make sure you understand rows and columns. Hopefully, you see you only have four available in column one. You only have four available here in column three, column five, and column seven. And you might wonder, like, hey, is it okay to have you know, two right next to each other like this? Yes, that is perfectly fine. In fact, you're going to have to have at least two of the rows or two of the columns of the base sets will have to be in the same block. That's fine. And I also will work with a swordfish as well. All right, so we did that. So now we're, these are our base sets, columns one, three, five, and seven. So what are our cover sets? So we're going to make the eliminations. Row two, row four, row eight, and row nine. Okay, so we remove all the colors there, and then we can remove all these nines from those cells. And what you might notice is now what you end up with is a one, four, six naked triple with these three cells. We removed all those sevens, eights, and nines. And since this is a one, four, six, the one, four, six can only be in those three cells in the column. So you can remove the six from right here and solve this cell for a five. At this point in the puzzle, you can solve the rest of it just using the popular strategies found in my free Sudoku solving guide. I will leave that up to you. If you want some more practice, see if you can spot the jellyfish in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.